Well, this is a massive accomplishment. I have the opportunity to talk to many people throughout the country in my role with ESTE. And many, I'd say at least half the state agencies that I'm talking to around the nation, some of them are still struggling just dealing with the legacy environment, let alone being able to virtualize and be efficient. One of the things I've noticed in all great leaders that I talk to in government is they generally have a, a code, a set of priorities, some guiding principles that they put into effect to make things happen. It's not something where you just automatically said, oh, I'm going to let the team work and this is going to happen. There's always problems. There's always policy and mandates and politics going around. Would you share, you know, as a great leader in government, what are some of those guiding principles that you implement to be effective here in the state? I think uh, it starts with honesty. I'm not going to necessarily define each of these principles, but I will say a few things about it. Mm -hmm. Honesty, you have to be honest with yourself and what you can accomplish, and you have to be honest with your, your team members and even your customers about when they're coming to you with requests, you have to be honest with them about mm -hmm. what the impact's going to be, what the, the likelihood is going to be of it, being able to implement it. Integrity. Integrity is just something that, to me, goes without saying. Uh, you have to believe in your work product. You have to believe in your team. Mm -hmm. You have to have that kind of pride. And I think respect is also a big thing with a value. I respect myself. I respect my, my coworkers. I also respect the, the customers. Uh, accountability. Can't say enough about accountability. Uh, not going to go into that one, though. And uh, I would think that dependability goes a long way, too. You, you want to be available for your customer, you want to be available for your staff, you want to you put out the, the notion that they can come to you for uh, anything, whether it's highly technical mm -hmm. things or whether it's business issues that they might see. Uh, and then I would think that fun would be on the board too. You have, <laughs> to, you have to keep it light. You have to have fun at work and uh, just remember that uh, this is a job, but at the same time, uh, we're all people and uh, find the moments to smile and laugh. I think those are words to live by. Well, there's also, I think, when you're talking about where you work in a department, you, you look at abilities that you should probably strive to, to have. And I think leading people is a big one. And your people, the, the categories are your customers, your, your, your staff, uh, your coworkers, and other BDOs, uh, boards, departments, and offices. Uh, leading change is huge now with AP 2408. Uh, most of us have to wear the, the hat of change agent. Mm -hmm. uh, being results driven helps. Well, and that's also, you know, one of the one of the things you point out here is that change isn't always an easy thing, especially in a government organization when you've been doing something for a certain way. You have people that may have invested their whole careers in a function or action being done that way. And all of a sudden you have to come and say, well, we're going to go a different way. So, you know, and particularly, I think that's, you know, what you were saying, that's where your time for innovation and finding ways to develop those folks. And I, I sometimes think the, the change management aspect of um, government is much harder than implementing the technology. Right. Absolutely. And with AB 2408, it represented several changes, and there was a huge need to educate mm -hmm. both the staff that would be impacted and also the customers that would be impacted. Because there was the great unknown. What am I going to expect in mm -hmm. the near term? What am I going to expect in the long term? So you have to really understand the change before you can communicate the change. Also, I would think that business acumen is something that is you, something you need to keep in mind when you're talking about where you work. Your, your, your customers, they speak business. You have mm -hmm. to be able to speak business. And you have to, when you're bringing technology issues to them, you have to break them down in terms that they understand. And then the last thing is building coalitions. So we see a lot of that with uh, these consolidation initiatives. Mm -hmm. You have departments that have certain technologies in place mm -hmm. that they could leverage, that they could bring others on board with, and you need to form teams in order to do that, in order to share that knowledge, in order to train other people, and in order to explain the problems that you see with implementing something. So you have to get really good at networking and forming alliances with folks to get things done. Mike, before we wrap up today, one of the other areas that we probably need to talk a little bit are tier three data centers. Right. 
Could you talk a little bit about the impact on Tier 3 data centers and how you all, as an agency, as you've been going through uh, the transformation with AB 2408, how you've, how you've begun to focus on Tier 3 data centers? Sure. One of the things that it actually calls for in AB 2408 is for departments to begin migrating mission-critical applications to Tier 3 data centers. And that has benefits, obviously. Mm -hmm. It allows you to have those mission-critical applications in a facility that has redundancies in the area of mm -hmm. power, cooling, mm -hmm. and it also has uh, different physical security aspects than most uh, computer rooms and data centers have. And the other expectation is for those departments with regional presences that those computer rooms are closed by uh, the date in the future. I believe it's 2013. Okay. Right. Thanks, Mike. Again, on behalf of the PSTA, I want to thank our guest today, Mike Cave. If you're interested in watching other PSTE interviews, as well as some of our government and industry panel discussions on topics such as legacy migration, cloud computing, cost optimization, please visit us on the web at www.publicsectortechnologyexchange.com. On behalf of the PSTE, I'm James Baker. Thank you for watching and have a great day.